Thanks for listening to a very special edition of the AZ Wildcats podcast signing day. Joined by Jason Shear, I am Mike Luke. Hello, Jason Shear. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm very proud of you for, for hammering that in. All right. Just so everybody knows the new background, which you're all wondering about, I'm sure. I just hammered it in, the pennant. And on top of that, medical tape is totally useless. Give you an idea. There's a Sun Devils thing on here. And I put the uh, medical tape over the, the the Sun Devils thing, and it still fell off. Medical tape sucks. There's no reason to have it. So on that note, Sheer, we got a lot to get to today, and there's going to be a lot of uh, boneheads that are going to say, oh, Arizona or Arizona football, uh, they're down there with Colorado ranked. You guys, you need to understand, they're, this is based off the portal. Correct, Jason Shear? Uh, Yeah. It's <laughs> call out toe tree. It's fine. The rankings. Well, it was just, it was a, it was a misleading tweet because the tweet was only high school recruits while ignoring everything else. Colorado, if you go by portal has the fifth best portal class in the entire country, right? They don't, they don't recruit high school kids. Does Arizona's class need work? Yeah. They just lost their head coach two weeks ago. That's what happens. Yeah, so I was talking with the uh, Jamari Phillips uh, uncle, who we very much like, but at the same time was being a little bit of a putz today on Twitter. He was also saying that, uh, you know, you should demand better. You need to understand something here. Brent Brennan took over two weeks ago. Not only did Brent Brennan take over two weeks ago, the entire, this is just very frustrating, the entire Jed Fish took a lot of those players with him. Duh. You're not going to just be able to get recruiting is all about relationships. You can't just go and say, Hey, Keona Wilhite, who by the way, made a good decision. Um, you know, come here, come to Arizona or whatever. You, it's all about relationships there. Sheer. Yeah, absolutely. Like look, Brent Brennan landed guys from San Jose state because of his relationships. The difference is that San Jose state in a nice way. I don't think I'm saying anything crazy. Is it as good or has a higher high level player as Arizona did last year? So you're not taking 15 guys from San Jose State. Jed is still trying to land guys from Arizona. Know that right. for a fact. Uh, and so, you know, that's he's going to get those relationships. And he didn't do anything special. Like he signed Rashawn Clark. Well, Rashawn Clark was going to Arizona and yeah. uh, Ilkema going to Arizona and all that. He also didn't land, like you mentioned, Will Height. Uh, we were laughing. Will Height wanted nothing to do with Jed Fish. It's kind of funny. We're, we're going to get to all the players here, but this is absolutely fantastic. Keona Wilhite, we should all root for. Keona Wilhite decommits from Arizona, goes to Washington. Then uh, Jed Fish is hired. Then Keona Wilhite says, I am out of here. I am going to Nebraska. We like uh, we like uh, Keona Wilhite a great deal for doing all of this. All right. So let's get to the show. Let's get to uh, what's going on here as far as uh, commitments. We need to start with Troy Smith or a uh, Troy Smith, Trey Smith, excuse me, Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State. I love, uh, I love Trey Smith. This is a very good sign. Arizona needed to. Arizona needs defensive linemen. Needs defensive linemen badly. Obviously, BBN is back. We all know that. Uh, you got Ty Ty Uyongalele. You got Chuba Moy. But at the same time, you need more. This is a player from his size, from his frame, from his build, should transition well to the uh, Pac-12 level. I get that it's San Jose State, but he's got the frame and he's got the explosiveness that he should be good immediately. You mean Big 12 level, Mike? we oh, got to start talking point. about Big 12 level. That's a good Mike. point. That is a good point. I apologize. Uh, yeah, I look at production, and, and I think Trey Smith's numbers were so good at that level that they'll carry over. I mean, the 10 tackles for loss, whatever, the six and a half sacks – I think one and a half of those sacks came against USC. Mm -hmm. He's a big dude. Uh, he's a junior, so he has multiple years. Technically an in-state kid coming back. Uh, he was he was good in high school, under-recruited. I like to pick up a lot. You can pretty much lock him in as a starter. San Jose State fans and writers have told me that he was considered to be the leader on the defense. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's absolutely – this is a guy where even if Brennan wasn't the coach and he entered the portal – I would have wanted, you know, because of how good he is. Yeah, and on top of that, too, like you said, the thing that was great about Arizona last year is that you were able to, you know, move a lot of guys in and out from the defensive line. This guy certainly gives you that possibility of being able to do that. Like the new background, like the new background. I'm like, all right, there we go. I had nothing to do with this, so I cannot claim credit. But Trey Smith, though, very good. And like you said, the great thing about him, too, multiple years if he wants them. Now, yeah. 
if he's good enough that he's off to the NFL after a year, that's obviously a good thing, but we certainly would take that. Okay. Now let's talk. Should we stay on the defensive line? No, you know what? Let's stay on the defensive line. Then we'll get to the running backs. We got a lot of good backup options coming in here next year. Um, but, uh, all right. Now come on Darton, um, five sacks at Syracuse. Um, <laughs> Shear was trying to tell me that he was better than BBN. He's wrong. He's not better than BBN. But that's not what I said. But okay, <laughs> that's not what I said at all. What'd you say? I said that he's he's graded out. I said according to PFF, he would have been the highest rated defensive lineman on Arizona last year. That's it. All Good right. Place. Either way, we'll definitely take him though. 5'11, 271. Uh Scott Schlittenhart, your senior editor, was making made a pretty good point uh, via uh tweet to me where he said that um he said, I love how everybody's all ex or everybody's uh bummed that we only got a 270 pound defensive lineman. How quickly do they forget when we were throwing out 250 pound defensive linemen? It, again, it comes down to production. This guy is 5'11", 270, and in the ACC, he had five and a half sacks and 60 tackles and was a very legitimate defensive lineman. I would pencil him in a, as a starter. I think next he team. starts next to Big Bill. All right, so here's what I think the line, the starting lineup is right now. By the way, uh, everybody, multiple people in here asking about Takario Davis. I'm just going to keep saying no news is good. No news is good news. Can I, I want to explain this to people. It, it it goes for recruiting, too. I always say when like people ask me for uh, an update on a recruit every day, that's not how this stuff works. Like, Takario Davis doesn't wake up every day and his mind's change and he agonizes for 20 of 24 hours. When he's ready to announce his decision, he'll announce his decision. Is time running out? Absolutely. Like, if he's going to Washington, he probably has to go very soon. I, are the white Aaron Donald... Is the white Aaron Donald? Is that Big Bill Nor? Is that BBN? Well, no, because Aaron Donald is six one. All right, so okay, but uh, but Darton's oh, not God. Darton's not white though. Look, well, I'm not getting into that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't have a. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want anything to do with that. Erica Day, the great Erica Day. Yeah, Erica, Erica Day, a follower on Twitter, by the way. She was at the coaches show. Some people might try to keep Erica out. Erica says, nice try. I have connections. We will be joining Erica next week at the Coaches Show. This is true, Jason Shear. Yeah, we will. All right. There we go. All right. Now, so those two defensive linemen, here's what I think the right now. This is just a guess. We're assuming Isaiah Ward is going to Washington, correct? Yeah, just might as well. All right. Let's just assume, although it is still odd that he hasn't announced. Did you use thumbtacks or different tape? Buzz off. I a literal use... nails. This dude used nails. I, I used nails. You know what? Sometimes you gotta do nails. Sometimes you gotta just do things yourself. And you know what? I got tired no of uh, I got tired of waiting around. Um, <laughs> all right, but so the defensive line, we're gonna keep on that. Don't worry, we're getting to the running backs. We're getting to the running backs. Um, right now, I think on paper it would probably be. Darton, BBN, uh, what Ty Ty at one of the, the at the other end, and then um, Trey Smith. Yes. That's not a lot of depth, but it's just a is just your starting four. That's not bad though either. It's not bad at all. I think it's a very solid four. Um, you talk about depth. You go, you know, Chubba May. I think you probably need another interior and another end. That's that would be my assumption. Right, Mike Fader. Oh wow, the the great oh, Mike Fader. Yes. Oh. Dude, when we got Mike Candrea's son and Mike Fader in this uh, in this at the same time, sheer we're making moves around here. All right, hey, Mike. Mike, when are you bringing the great Erica on the show? Oh, we are next week. We're bringing Erica on. We got to figure out a date, but we will. Uh, we will figure. Got to get the sensors out. ready too. Yes, yes, we got to get the sensors ready. The great Jacob Franklin. Um. Okay. Now, so that's the defensive line. Uh, now you still got to add some more dudes eventually. I think because again the depth. I'd like to see more depth, but that's not a bad starting. Uh, that's not a bad starting uh, uh, line as well. Okay, now, 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 let's talk some running backs. Now, Shear had a great point. He said, "Listen, it would be very, very good to get some really some good quality depth behind Fam hashtag Fam at the running back spot. Arizona got two guys that I think can uh, be very good compliments to Fam Shear. I thought that was an awesome point that you made." Uh, let's, why don't we start off with the uh, quality Conley first, any guy that no. averages, no, go ahead. Any guy that averages almost eight yards a pop and almost a thousand yards. I'm in on, I like it. 
Uh, and I think Zoe Carter made a good point. Uh, Look Conley at you calling him Zoe already. <laughs> Conley wasn't the starting running back. They had right. the other kid. I don't remember his name, but they had two. He ran for 1,000, and then Conley almost ran for 1,000 as well. So I, I think you're going to see more run game. Like, uh, you know, Jed, there'd be games where he literally just said, yeah, Jonah Coleman, but you're going to get eight carries. I don't I don't see that at all. Um, mm-hmm. I see uh, more of a, probably more of a balanced offense. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. But Conley is good. I mean, he, he he's a very successful six yards a carry. Um, you know, he had, I think it was six carries for 108 yards against USC. And I realized USC didn't have the best rush defense, but that's Still a pretty like, damn good stat line. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, that's, that's impressive. I, I like him and, and, and I'm a believer where if your coaching staff wants to bring you over, right? Like there's gotta be a reason. There's clearly mm-hmm. something they see in you. Well, yeah, and the numbers speak for itself. On top of that, and again, I uh, got beat up on your board a while back for saying, I don't know that I see Jordan Washington, who we're going to get to, by the way, four-star running back. You got to remember, peeps, that when Jordan Washington is going to be very, very good, but he's also a smaller guy. A lot of times, especially at that running back spot, these dudes need a year to be able to bulk up, to get thicker. I mean, just look at Fam. I mean, and he's maybe a little bigger than Fam at the same stage, but not that much bigger. Yeah, I like Washington a lot. Um, you know, I, I think his his competition is probably directly with Fam, right? Because they're very they're very similar. Uh, I, at least this year, I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting because all of a sudden, this running back room is is filled again, right? Mm-hmm. Like you right. got you lost Jonah, you lost Wiley, you lost DJ Williams, but you added Jordan Washington, uh, Jacory, and uh, Conley. I mean, these guys all expect to get carries. I'm very, very curious, um, you know, to to see how that's used. Also, I found out last night, and this makes me feel better. Do you know that Zoe is very close with Scotty Graham? Really? Yeah, they know each other very well. So, I, yeah. and I love Scotty Graham. We'll never yeah, say. You know, I don't know if anyone has noticed. We actually we we don't like Jed, but we've never said anything bad about the assistants. No, and especially Scotty Graham. Yeah. Scotty Graham is a good dude. I can't blame Scotty Graham for going. It's a big, it's a big time job. You're getting paid more. Scotty Graham is a righteous dude. I am going to miss him backing the A though because I very much look forward to his daily tweet retweets of me. It made me feel very cool from time to time. But yes, I didn't know that he and Scotty Graham were uh, good friends. That's a, that's good to know. Yeah. It's like you and me. Character travels, character hovers around each other. A friend of Scotty is a friend of mine. Sometimes it depends. Yeah, yeah, it depends. Although he was, although he was tweeting with somebody that he shouldn't have been a while back. Yes. Yes. But we also chalk that up to Scotty just being a pure-hearted guy. Yes. Yes. Um, Okay, Mike. Did your coworker uh, Anthony Totri's head? uh, All they talk about is U of A. Blah 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 blah. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like I said, everybody wants to be the U of A. I can't really uh, blame them. I would want to be the U of A. As it is well. super weird. I do feel, and this isn't just a Tochi thing. I do feel that ASU talks about Arizona considerably more than Arizona talks about ASU. Uh, correct, because we're better. I mean, it's crazy. Like, there's like a 50 page, literally. Oh, yeah, on board. Cartman's board. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, but like, it's it's weird. I don't know. It's weird. I gotta, you know what's funny on that uh, that ASU board on 24-7? By the way, Sheer, where can they find you doing all your work since we're talking about it? Uh, WildcatAuthority.com, Wildcat Scoop Podcast. But WildcatAuthority.com, we have a 60% off sale for the rest of the day. Check Do it out. Know. Very, very good stuff. There's also these people, to give you an idea, I'm um, doing this parent segment. By the way, Chester Burnett is coming on uh, Friday. They everyone think, everyone thinks you're smarter and more powerful than you really are. It's, it's gonna... remarkable. I mean, I'll take it. I'm flattered, but um, yeah. So this guy, this this dork, puts on there essentially that I'm having this series with parents of undecided kids to try to convince them to come back. No, these are players that have already announced they are coming back. And let's be honest here: no parent is going to listen to what I have to say when their kid. Well, actually, well. There Let's, are, we should make that a segment where, like, we try to get Takario Davis's parents on here, and we right. just hound them for an hour, and then at the end of the hour, they have to make their decision. You know who I've reached out? You know who I'm trying to reach out to? I can't find any contact information. 
uh, Gunnar Maldonado's yeah. parents. I could just have an apology session for basically an hour and a half. I might be able to do that. I might be able to get that done. If you could get that done for me, I'd like that. Again, sometimes I deserve to be beat up. This is one of those times for sure. See what you can do. Who would you uh, reach out to about this? Gunnar Maldonado. Oh, you know, oh, you have Gunnar Maldonado? Do it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, J- uh, Ja'Cory Crosby Merritt. Great name. Great game. Interesting story. Um, he graded out uh, as the fourth best running back, according to Shears Bible, pro football focus. Um, coming in here, bigger guy. Probably, like I said, probably the uh, leader in the clubhouse to be the starting running back, according to Jason Shear. I'm not signing off on fam not being the starting running back, though. But either way, this kid's really, really good. And he quote tweeted you and said that he is very, very driven to be as good as he can. Yeah, he's really good. Um, Cool story about him. He visited Washington, took the official visit to Washington, didn't commit, and Washington wanted him, called up Arizona and said, hey, I know we've been talking. Can I come take an official visit out, out there? Arizona brings him in and he commits. So that is a legit, we got you, you know, we got him yeah. over Washington type of deal. I like him a lot. I, I think he's the starter. I really do. You know, and um, I know you like fam. I, I think it, it goes back no, to like, you're about to diss fam. No, but it goes, it goes back to what we said when, when fish had the, the room, right? Like Decorey is a, is a fine receiver, but the most receptions he's ever had in a year was Alabama state. And it was 13, hmm. right? Right. Quali, I'm gonna look this up just so I don't I don't screw it up. I, I don't recall, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna look it up for you, Mike. He had 27 catches last year, so he is a receiver. But Speedy Luke is a guy where I always go back to like Demetric Felton, because that is what Arizona told me he was going to be like when he came here, right? Mm-hmm. You're gonna get eight carries a game, you're gonna get four catches, and you're gonna return kicks. I want 12 touches a game for fam. That's all I want. And and he doesn't need to start to do that. Right. Like you can even go two back. I think a two back formation is something that we could see with Babers. And that's the thing too. In reality, we have literally no idea um, what offense Dino Babers is going to run. I'm reading this too. All right. Bow down UW. Oh, dude, buzz off. We're not babies. If we were babies, we would say Keona should have gone to Arizona. He went to yeah, a very no, we're we're high glad. institution in Nebraska. Yeah. Nebraska, listen, Nebraska has won. Th- uh, listen, man, Nebraska doesn't have to claim split national championship <laughs> yeah, from the 19, yeah. ni- from 1990, yeah. man. He made the right yeah. decision. While we're at it, huge basketball game for Nebraska tonight. Oh, oh, that's right. Nebraska. That's, that's a big game. That is a big game for our tournament chances. Mike, Mike, Mike Luke against Bruce Pascoe. We got a lot of good basketball. I know we're off subject, but hey, who's on? UCLA, what games are on? What games UCLA are on? Tonight? Stanford is tonight. Hey, can you pull that tweet up, by the way, about from that guy that put out the, uh, and again, I apologize, not that guy, because I don't have, my phone is charging because uh, it's a long story. But can you pull the tweet up about uh, where he was talking about the Big 12 fan bases and about how much cooler they are than uh, 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 Pac-12 fan bases? And his remark about Washington was absolutely awesome. I retweeted it. Go on my Twitter right now. Go find this. This is very when good. Did you retweet it. What's that? When did you retweet it? Today. 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 It was I retweeted it earlier today. Well, I will talk while you find this, though. It's very, very good. And uh it makes me laugh every time I read it. Um, but oh glad the Big 12 fans care about sports. Fun debates already happening. In the Pac 12, it was just us as Arizona fans, Oregon Homers, UW betas. Deluded USC fans, Dion, I'm not reading that, a Utah bubble, the Oregon State damn guy, and then Carlos UCLA guy giving bad takes. <laughs> UW betas makes me laugh each time. It's true. No, it, it, it really is true. You follow that. That guy, that's a bit, like I said, that I told that guy to pin that tweet. It's very, very good. Um, it is good. Okay. So the running back room, and let's be honest here, offense is pretty much set. And... You got Noah Fafita. You got Braden Dorman is going to be the backup. Um, you got three running backs now. Uh, and keep in mind, let's not forget about Brandon Johnson. Is their parents watch the show? Brandon Johnson's another interesting one as well. Um, and on top of that, um, you've also at the wide receiver position, 
We already talked about it. Got a loaded wide receiver room. All of the starting of offensive line, offensive line is back along with Tanner or uh, Tanner, uh, not Tanner McLaughlin. Um, um, uh, I got this. Te technically, Jordan Morgan is gone. So, a Lane, starting, I, I always say the starting O line is back. It's not, but four of them are back, and yeah. we got in your guy. We oh, got the, go back. I got a question. So, if Deuce is good, do we say that it was the Deuce boost? What? Deuce, the offensive uh, tackle from Northwestern. Oh, deuced. Yeah. Do what we call it the deuced deuce boost? Uh, that's terrible, but you'll probably call it that. All right. Al yes. Alex Deuce, the deuce boost. Um, then we got Leif Magnuson, obviously about as good a backup as you'll find in college football. And you got a bunch of d different dudes. Tylen Gonzalez, Elijah Payne. Yeah. I can keep going. There's a we lot to like. Talk. There. We got to talk about the kid they landed today, too. Evan Stewart. Stewart. Like, this is, he's going to play guard. He's played three games in three years. Injury issues, major injury issues. But he was a starter coming out of spring twice. So, like, had he not got hurt, which I know is a big if, he would he would have started, like, 25 games. But he's so, also – he's more depth, though, because he ain't starting over Moy no, and he ain't starting over – He's Jimmy. not starting, but he's clearly a guy that they believe in. And if, if Josh Oglesby wants him and brought him here and it looks like he's only played three games or whatever, you take him. He, he might have the weirdest eligibility ever, too. Because COVID year, redshirt red year, year, and already the medical redshirt, like he might be like a fourth year freshman right now. Okay. Now, oh, so we could be like the ninth year guy. Is it at Florida, the ninth year guy? Yeah, I'm hoping. All right. Does, all right. Everybody asking about MLC. We will get to MLC in a second, but... Andrew Blaho, the great Andrew Blaho, made a point earlier that we need to we need to we need to shut down all of the dissing of Jacob Franklin. Um, Jacob Franklin got hit hard on Twitter yesterday. I won't stand for it. I won't stand for it. Listen, man, Sheer can attest to this. I'm a weird dude. I'm a very weird bar. I think quirky is the right uh, term. Um, is pro oh, I quirky is a, probably a good term. Um. But uh, Jacob Franklin's a good guy. Jacob Franklin doesn't need to comment. This is more me of just BSing and trying to get Jacob Franklin onto the show because it amuses me. But he's a Sun Devil and he's a producer. Everybody be nice to Jacob Franklin. He's a very nice person. Um, and uh, he thinks very highly of you. We're all quirky. Yes. Yes, we are. We are in our own different ways. Okay. Now, uh, then at the tight end spot, we got, like I said, sure, what you're coming on Friday, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably. All right. We got big Chester coming on for the first 15 minutes. So key and Burnett, Dorian Thomas. Uh, I, like I said, the offense is pretty much good to go. In my opinion, man, I think we're pretty much good. And I mean, what say you, I know that you're a, you think that MLC might be the best receiver on the team next year. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> make the case. I don't worry about the offense. I, I really don't. Wide receiver. I'm very curious. I, there's gotta be, I, I would assume Bobby Wade is going to want to rotate more. And I would assume that Brennan is going to let him rotate more. Um, you know, I, I think Kevin Cummings wanted to rotate more and, and judges didn't let him. I, I really do. Now that, is, that was very annoying for me. T Mac very clearly will never leave the field beyond that. I think we see a rotation. Would you have, would you have great concerns immediately about Brent Brennan? If a uh, T Mac wasn't starting? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> to, to put it mildly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. MLC. We've had a bunch of people ask about MLC. I would not start MLC, but again, keep in mind, I am probably, uh, I take it for what it's worth. I'm a dork. I would not start MLC. I think that his, his ceiling is a little too low or as I think Malachi Riley, I think has a lot more potential. I also like Kevin green as well. I would put Lamonius in there, but I would not put him in over those two guys. Yeah, it's it's kind of like basketball. I mean, I don't care who starts. It, it's just like who's who's going to get more reps, right? Like if MLC starts and he gets twenty plays, whatever. Like it's, I, I just like the fact that it's going to be an open competition. Right. I don't feel like last year was an open because every time Riley or Kevin Green came in, especially Riley, like they did something. Right. Like right away, and then they would just come off the field. And watching Riley as well, Riley's just got a little bit more of a. Riley just Riley just I mean MLC's big and buff and all that but Riley makes plays it always felt like with MLC that they were having to try to force the ball in like I think it was the Oregon State game where Jed was trying to prove that MLC was awesome and he got like eight catches for 14 yards or something it's, like that. 
magic word we always use upside, right? Mm -hmm. Like MLC is kind of, it feels based on his time at Colorado and all this, this is MLC. Like the one you see is the one you get. Riley and green have upside. All right. And I think there's some guys that are no longer on the roster at wide receiver too. Like I think English is gone and I think Carlos Wilson might be gone as well. Did Carlo, Carlos Wilson was an interesting story. Remember when we were sitting next to somebody at a press conference, a U of, a U of a guy at a press conference when Carlo, give you an idea. This is why, how cool Sheer is. We are literally sitting next to somebody, a competitor. I will leave it at that. And, um, Carlos Wilson had literally announced to Arizona and this guy puts out like 10 minutes later that he thinks that Utah is in the lead for Carlos Wilson. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was funny. And we were sitting right there and we were giggling like little school girls. Huh? Sure. Sometimes, you know, stuff that, uh, that other people don't, especially and, when it's made public. Well, that was the best part was like, he had just like, I was like, Oh, he's going to announce at any minute to Arizona. I think it was Arizona and Oregon state. And then this guy's like, he's expected to go to Oregon State. And we're sitting right next to each other. I'm like, no, he's literally committing as we speak. Like, he, already, like yeah. he is signed. It's just a matter of announcing him. All right. Now. Carlos uh, Wilson is off the roster. He is off the roster? Yeah. Where's he going to? Washington? Uh, No, I doubt it. I don't know where he's going. Yeah. All right. Don't forget AJ Jones. We will never forget AJ Jones because the great Tony Jones could be popping in here at any point. Um, Let's see. Uh. I listen, I, this one ain't happening. Um, I understand the, uh, the whole servite thing, but we, we had less Fafita on the show a while back and yeah. less essentially said, man, I tried to get Arizona to recruit him. They didn't think he was good enough. And less said essentially that I don't believe that Mason Graham, who has just won a national title at Michigan and is one of the best players in the country is going to come to Arizona a school that didn't deem him good enough. Also, you got to keep in mind, like Michigan's about to hire a badass defensive coordinator. Like the rumor is Wink Martindale. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys, like, like it's gonna, they're gonna keep most of that team together. Right. I, all right. Oh, by the way, this is very funny. Um, let's solve two problems. Move Kylan Boswell to the football team. <laughs> Are we going out on a limb? You want to go out on a limb? Huh? Kylan plays well tomorrow. I hope. I hope. Oh, by the way. Um, this is a road game. Everybody out there, we have two things to keep an eye on. There is going to be, a, I have a great idea. There's going to be a leader of men reference to Umar Ballo and a four peaks reference as well. It's a great crew tomorrow. Mulebach and Roxy is, is awesome. It's good. Yes. Mulebach, Mulebach and Roxy is as good as it gets. No Casey Jacobson. Um, by the way, uh, Casey Jacobson having to do the Arizona Stanford game. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's uh, let's now let's move over to the defense. We just talked about the defensive line. Um, all right, now I'm got I'm not going to pretend to know anything about Cyrus Durham other than the fact that he's a JUCO and he was rated the 65th best JUCO in the country, and he didn't really have any good offers besides Arizona. But Arizona likes him. Tell me more. Uh, so there's there's basically the thing I take is they have this coaching staff has a very good relationship with the JUCOs up there because that's San Jose State. You have to. Um, College of San Mateo is a very good Juco. Like, it's very well coached. They play against pretty good competition. So when they, when they got hired, they went right to Price and right to Durham and offered them right away. Durham is 6'2", 240. He played linebacker at San Mateo. They're going to bulk him up, and he's going to play defensive end at Arizona. Um, he put up good numbers. As, as I mean, 10 sacks, 66 tackles. He's, he's got the size. He's a really good kid. Um, it, it'll be interesting. You never know with Juco. Juco's hit and miss. He could be awful or he could be really good. We just, you just don't know. We don't know. And you know, we're not going to claim to know, but that's what Shear says. All right, Justin Flo. We can count on five Justin Flo questions per chat. Um, I feel we have to have a disclaimer. Here's where I'm at with Justin Flo. And again, I would love to do say my bad, Justin Flo. We've had three different, Justin Flo's played for three different coaching staffs now and all dramatically different. From uh, Crystal Ball, who's an idiot, um, to uh, Dan Lanning, who's clearly a very good coach, to Jed, even though I don't like, even though I think Jed's a slime ball, um, Jed clearly did a lot of good things here. And not one of those staffs deemed him good enough to put on the field. At that point, that's three coaching staffs there, Sheer. Look, man, if Danny Gonzalez can't get anything out of Justin Flo, then you can't get anything out of Justin Flo. 
This is it. This this season, this is his career, right? If he can't see the field with Danny Gonzalez as his position coach, who I, I think very highly of Gonzalez, if you can't tell. If Flo can't yeah, get no on the kidding, field, man. Should like, Brent Brennan be worried about his job with Jason Shearer? I, I, think, I think this is perfectly set up where, like, if Dwayne Aquino leaves in two years and retires, Gonzalez would just step right in as the DC, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Did I ever but, tell you like, about? Go, go ahead. ahead. Did I ever no, tell you about this buddy of mine that referred to, said he didn't want Dwayne Aquino because he was an old white guy? That's not what I said. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't say it was you. Who are you to assume, assume who I was talking about? <laughs> who are you to assume? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, like, eventually we got to stop asking. People are like, move him to edge. Look, Justin Flo, I always, I, it, and I, it, you know, like when you throw the ball to the dog and you just, the dog goes and gets the ball. Yeah. But the dog can't do any other tricks. Right. That's kind of like Justin Flo. He can go get that quarterback, but if you if you drop him in coverage, it's bad, man. Right. Like it is. If so you depend on him in the running game, he's going to get blocked. Like right. And so the problem is, people are like, "Oh, make him a rusher," but you can't because you can't on like third down where you say, "You know what? Just go get the quarterback." Other than that, you can't predict every play. But you also have guys in Uyagalele and uh, um, Trey Smith that are naturally better. I mean, that's what they do. They do rush the passer. By the way. Um, I do think that, yes, uh, yes, Dwayne Aquina is Hawaiian. Sheer had no clue. Sheer thought he was some dude from Kansas. Um, but uh, real quick, I, he's, I'm he's Hawaiian like you're Nebraskan. Come on. Dwayne Aquina. Um, all right. We need to, one thing though, uh, people out there, I look for a big breakout year out of Ty Ty. I like Ty Ty a lot. I'm not, by breakout year, I'm not saying he's going to have 13 sacks, but if you were to tell me that Ty Ty is going to have six or seven sacks this year, it would not surprise me in the least, Skier. Yeah, I, this is a big this is a big year for him. I, I think he's going to start unless Arizona goes and gets another end in the portal, but uh, I like him. And, you know, Joseph Molo loves the Polynesian guys, loves them. Like that is, that's going to be his, Recruiting area, all of it. And so I, him and, and the Polynesian guys are going to get along. I, I think Tai Tai probably starts. Does uh, does Hawaiian count as Polynesian? Yes, they're all related. Okay. All right. Everybody, okay. Google that right now. Say, does Hawaiian yeah, count? Does absolutely. Hawaii, I don't know that it does, Sheer. Uh, yes, it does. It does. Is Hawaii yeah. considered Polynesia? Yes. Yes. Oh. All right. There we go. We'll take Come it. On. All right. We're all yeah. Polynesian. So Sal- salute emoji. Um, okay. Now at the line bat now, but there's still we're not gonna blow smoke here because we don't blow smoke. Um the uh we're not well, yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh <laughs> shout out OGs. Um <laughs> now at the uh, but there are certainly spots that still need to be addressed uh on this team. You gotta get more linebackers now. Leviticus Sua is definitely somebody that I think you're hoping takes a jump. He is a Polynesian for sure. Um Hawaiians aren't uh oh look at this, look at this. Hawaiians aren't Tua said so in an interview. Oh, sure, sure. What does Tua know? That dude's had so many concussions, he doesn't know. Ah, that's a good point. Uh, that's, that's actually a really good point. All right, but Leviticus, Leviticus Sua obviously is a uh, a guy that you're hoping can make that uh, next move. Um, but then you got to get more corners. I'm totally cool with the safeties. Uh, Takario trading, totally cool with them in the nickel. We need more. Sa- we need more corners. That wasn't really addressed in a big way. That's going to be something that you uh, Arizona is going to have to address in the next seven transfer portal cycles before the season starts. Yeah, I mean, even if, if price is good, you still need another corner. Uh, my assumption is Viney is getting a closer look at the room to figure out what type of corner he wants, but they need one. Um, they'll get one in the spring portal. I don't know if he's going to be amazing, whatever. They'll get one. They'll, I mean, they're going to land whatever position they need in the portal. It's just going to be a matter of, is it depth or is it instant impact type of guys? All right. Overall, over, Google confirms Hawaiians are Polynesian. Yeah, that's why I looked it up. Google's never been wrong. Ooh. Everything Google does fascinate. You know what I don't understand about Google is that I understand that it goes with my cert, my searches and stuff, and they know that uh, well, that's what he that's what he likes. So I'm going to put this algorithm out there and whatnot. I don't understand how when I'm talking on the phone though about something that I'll give you an idea. I was talking with a buddy about nunchucks the other day, like, you know, like the, like the Ninja Turtle things. And 
there was something that came up on Facebook a while back, or like literally like three days later about nunchucks. Yeah, that happened the other day. Shelby and I were talking about Disneyland. I didn't look up anything about Disneyland, and then I went on my Instagram, and the first ad was for Disneyland. How do they? So they're listening to us, not just. I don't like it, Sheer. Yes, that's why. God knows what happens in your house. Sheer, talk with some of the, your friends in the Mossad, some of your connections. Tell them we do not. Tell them we do not like this. Can you do this? I'll, I'll talk to Shelby. She's uh. Yeah, that's all. That Shelby would be the ac- a- absolute source for that. You know, joking aside, though, I'm okay. I'm really okay with how Arizona saved this because, again, you got to remember the stats been on for two weeks. You got you you filled out the running back room. You uh, you certainly addressed the defensive line. You probably got two starters and two quality starters, not just two like dudes that are like, all right, we'll just put them out there. Um, you got to get more, obviously, but I I think this was an okay save to be honest with you, Sheer. Yeah, yeah, and and again, like we can't say it enough. This roster isn't complete. I could analyze the crap out of this roster, and there's going to be plenty of changes. Like we just don't, we just don't know. Like and and, and so right now, you know, when when you look at it on a case by case basis, Arizona lost Jonah Coleman right to transfer, but they replaced him with Jacory Merritt and and Quali Conley. Jonah's good, but that's in terms of production, that's pretty even, right? All right. I'm guessing Jonah's better than those guys, but not measurably. How about right? That? And then you lost Russell Davis and Isaiah Ward, both good players. You replaced them with Trey Smith. In terms of production, Trey Smith has more production. All right. Uh, yes, Noah. Right now we are top. I believe Arizona goes into the year as a top fifteen team. I would pick Arizona to win. Uh, now listen, things still have to happen, but I would pick Arizona to win the Big Twelve. Sheer keeps saying that he thinks Arizona is going to finish fifth. He is wrong. I think Arizona is going to win the Big Twelve. I think they're the favorite along with Utah. No, I, I think it's Arizona and Utah. I I noticed today. Uh, have you seen Colorado's schedule? No, but is it brutal? We talked about Colorado. Uh, was it yesterday? Right, the most insecure fan base in the country by a mile. Go ahead, dude. So they have at Nebraska, at Colorado State, at UCF, at Arizona, at Texas Tech, at Kansas, and then their home games include Baylor, Cincinnati, Utah, and Oklahoma State. Good, good. They, they have one of the most difficult schedules in the country. I absolutely root against Colorado just because of their uh, fan base. I had no problem with the Colorado fan base, but I think the Dion, uh, <laughs> as that one guy said on his tweet, and the Dion yeah. uh, Riders. Um, did, yeah, go ahead. Did you see their defensive coordinator too? I don't know anything about him. Who they is it? The Bengal safety coach, Livingston. Nothing. No. No idea. No idea. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, oh, we need to make fun of Jed's new defensive coordinator for a second. Um. Here's what Jed is doing. Uh, everybody's asking me about, well, everybody's asking me, just my mom. It's not anybody cool. Um, Well, it's not mom. Sorry. Well, don't you ever say that about Janet again? Yeah, sorry. I apologize. Um, Steve Belichick. This was all this was, was him hiring somebody so he could say, I know his dad. His dad will be around here. I can throw the name out a bunch. You can take a bunch of pictures with Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick. This was just Jed trying to look cool. That's all this was, in my opinion. It's a really weird hire. It just is. Like, he's not good. There's no way this dude is getting on a plane and recruiting. Like, there's just, there's <laughs> no way. Uh, and what's the best case scenario, right? Like, there, he's, how many years is he going to be in college? Uh, yeah, was well, exactly. I would, uh, Steve Belichick would have, uh, it was funny though when uh, watching watching uh, Rich Carrillo talk about him saying, "Oh, he won three Super Bowls, this and that." Dude, I could have won three Super Bowls. One of the few times Chief has been right about something. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, salute Chief. Um, that could be a messy breakup, by the way. Um, either way, <laughs> back to uh, back to Arizona though. Um, I I think that again, you still got to address some things, but like you always say, Sheer, the rosters aren't finalized until like August first. There's still going to be uh, there's still going to be opportunities here, and the coaching staff will be able to go through spring, be able to figure out what you need. And honestly, I think the uh, templates there. I think Arizona's. I think Arizona's going to be the best team in the Big Twelve. Um, all right, let's make fun of ASU for a second. ASU continues to say, "Oh, we have a better recruiting class." It's because you brought in 85 three star kids, dude. I mean, like, look at it. There's nobody. Else. Here's what I'll at least give Dion. 
if you look at Dion's high school kids, and there's only like nine of them, but Dion brought in like seven four star kids. Um, you look at it. I didn't. I didn't realize the, the the star rating for the high school kids is very high. Dion brought in more four stars than ASU did in their thirty five uh, uh, commits. Sheer. They should not talk. Yeah, it's weird. It's just weird. Like it, Colorado is almost. You can't measure their recruiting class because Dion doesn't recruit high school kids, right? And if he does, like they're they're usually pretty highly rated. The problem is he only takes four, right? Like it, it, it's and then ASU. It's not. You're you're putting down other schools to build yours up because it's not as if ASU's class. We're talking about the 43rd best class in the country. This we're talking like about Ari- this isn't like Arizona's 2022 class, right? So like their composite class is 49th. So like, what are we building up? They have two four star players, and and one of them is coming off a torn ACL and is out next year. So like, what are we what are we building up? Right? Like, Nothing. and Nothing. their transfer class. That everyone, you know, that the ASU fans are going to say, oh, we're top 20. They had a higher transfer class last year. And what did it get them? Exactly. Oh, this is a great question. What team is better in the Big 12, football or basketball? I'm going to say football. football. I, 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 I am very prepared. If if Arizona loses guys that I think they're going to lose, I think next year's basketball is probably going to be a down year by Arizona standards. I think next year's Arizona team. This is just a guess, everybody. I have no clue on this whatsoever. Um, but I think that the Arizona is probably going to rock with a starting lineup of Crevis, Carter Bryant, uh, KJ Lewis, Jamari Phillips, and either Jaden or Kylan. Yeah, that's not right. That's not good enough. I don't know. No. There's going to be trans- there's going to be portal guys. That lineup's not good enough. I mean, it's young. There's a lot of talent there. But again, the Big Twelve's a different animal. I, yeah. I mean, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the Big 12. And I am so, uh, some. Uh, I had a Big 10 fan uh, trying to give me crap. Yeah, we can bring in transfers. Very good point, Noah. I had a Big 10 fan giving me crap saying, crummy conference. I don't care what anybody says. I would much rather go to the Big 12 than the Big 10. I can't watch Big 10 basketball. And you know what's funny about it? I'm not even sure Big 10 basketball is going to be any better because you're bringing UCLA. <laughs> you're bringing in USC. <laughs> you're bringing in Oregon. <laughs> You're bringing in Washington. It's going to be the same thing. I can't watch it. I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, look, as long as people realize that Arizona is going to lose, but here's the deal. Like someone posted today, like this gets you a three seed in the NCAA tournament. Like I'm trying to think who it was like Kansas, for instance, it's 18 and five. Right. And they got what? Four losses in the big 12. Right. Like Houston, everyone's like, Oh, they're playing like dog crap. They're probably a, a one seed right now at 20 and three. Like, the right. Big 12, when you look at it, it's just it's a different animal. Like you can lose like seven games in the Big 12 and still be a top two seed. You know what the Big 12, you know what the Big 12 is? It's what in basketball, it's what people try to tell us the SEC is in football. The SEC at the top is awesome in football. Totally get it. Not gonna get it. Alabama, Georgia, you name it. But then there's a lot of fake good teams, though in the uh in the sec that are just not really like like when kentucky will be in the top 25 no come on get out of here or like you know there's other te- a lot of fake good teams the big 12 is just brutal because you got like 10 teams that could possibly make the final four yeah i mean and and you got like you know we we look at like baylor 17 and 5 right mm-hmm. they lost consecutive games during the season and then in january they had a streak where they lost three games in a row right and, and then it's like but meanwhile, they're awesome. Like on Ken Palm, offensively, they're awesome. They're 17 and five. Guess what? They're going to lose another two, three, four games. Yep. Let's see. And they'll still be a, a, a top three seed. Listen to this. Kamaro Baker, the brother of Jamar Baker, uh, back to Arizona for his 10th season. He doesn't have any more eligibility, does he? There's uh, no way. After this? No. I hope so, though. I mean, there is absolute, there's absolutely no way. Um, by the way, you know, what's actually interesting. You know, what's actually really good basketball that I never really gave it. And we're just going off on a tangent right now, but, uh, mountain West basketball is actually really good this year. New Mexico is really good. Colorado state is really good. Um, who else is really good? There's like one or two other ones that are really good. It's a uh, good league. It's probably West. a better league than the con uh, pack 12. Yeah, no, Mountain West is legit. New Mexico is good. San Diego State is good. Utah State is good. Colorado State is good. Nevada is an awful, and Boise is an awful. 
What's that is better than the Big Ten? No, but why? Just because well, Purdue's better than all those. Big Ten, you have Purdue. You have Illinois and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Because this goes back fake to the fake good. thing. Come on, man. I know. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. This goes back to the fake thing. Like, no one remembers. Like, Arizona was six in the country. Or Wisconsin was six in the country. They've now lost two in a row. Arizona beat the shit out of Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, and, it wasn't a win. They won by 25 points. And it could have been 55 points. Yeah. So, it's like. Right. All the, but, hey, I'm all for it because that's going to look like an awesome win. Yeah, no, it is going to be a speak to me, oh, toothless wonder. Yes. Big Ten. But I get people also that ask me. Well, and again, that's my mother as well. Are you going to keep uh, the Big Ten hate going? Yes, we yes. will keep the Big Ten hate going because it sucks. Um, Even more now that. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mick Cronin in the Big Ten. I cannot wait. <laughs> oh. Hey, can we tell. Uh, or no, what was that? I got to get that clip of here. Oh, we got to give a shout out to your guy. Uh, oh, by the way. How, how let's let's talk about this for a second. When Purdue is allowed to get, uh, not cheat. Or because some of this, listen, Edie's awesome. I get all that. We saw what you were up to, Zach Edie. Um, but listen, 46 free throws to eight is ridiculous. Come on. It's uh, I never see anything like it. I really haven't. Like, it's because it's not just one game. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to Ken Palm to look at Purdue. They, uh, their free throw attempts, they actually don't shoot a good percentage. They're actually, believe it or not, they're 15th in the nation. So they don't. There's teams that go to the line more than Purdue. Hey, this is really funny. Having a mutant at center, that's mean. Lost Highway, that's mean. Hey, this is a good question by Anthony Humbert. I'll see you Saturday on the Anthony Humbert. Are we sure the Big 12 refs are better than the Pac-12? No, they're not. All right. Do you know well, that they did it? I, I sent you that article, right? Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. Did you guys know they didn't grade Big 12 refs until like a week ago? Which is wild. It's insane. Right. That, no, that's very, that, that's, that is absolutely insane. Same level, but either way, it's fan bases that care about sports. Like the guy on Twitter said, I just love how blunt he was already having good conversations. <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right. Um, all right. G uh, excellent opportunity. Become a diehard people. I got to start doing these discord chats at 1145 on Fridays. The link is out there. Briefly. Shears senior editor is the first one that got a back the A tattoo. All right, here we go. Back the A, baby. Scott Schlittenhart, Shear, between between that tattoo, your back the A background, you guys are really pushing it. Um, obviously, you guys are close. What was your thought when you, you know, like when, you know, are you thinking about getting one? I guess is my question. Oh, uh, no, I will never get an Arizona tattoo. I have three. I'm probably going to get my fourth here soon. I'll never get an Arizona tattoo, but I think the movement has officially arrived and it would make sense for you to get your first tattoo. It make it makes a lot of sense, but I just got to give you your senior editor a lot of credit for making that one happen. Sheer. It was, it looks great. looks fantastic. Maybe like a Kia boys on your arm. Once you got like a Kia boys. Sheer put out on Twitter that he hopes a meth addict steals my car because it is stolen. <laughs> By the way, I got the drug wrong. I meant fentanyl. My bad. Yeah, it's fentanyl. Sheer, hey, get a load of this, people. Sheer came to actually pick me up when they found the car that was stolen. Um, and it was there was like five purses in there. Uh, there was uh, nails, many nails, um, fentanyl, just you name it. I got it. Uh, the the car was. <laughs> You name it, I'll sell it. Fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> and it is that funny, was... though. You know what's amazing, though? Because technically I'm a crime victim now. <laughs> I can't find a way to get any money out of this. It is remarkable, though. You get I get text messages every time this putz meets with a pro uh, probation officer, uh, goes to court, whatever the case may be. I am keeping an eye on you, lady. I am keeping an eye. And again, it's not just Kia boys. It's Kia girls. So... They're all over. We got to keep Mike safe. We got to keep me safe, guys, because of, uh, listen, it's, it's going to be a community effort. On that note, though, Shear's going to be back with us on Friday with Big Chester Burnett. We got the post game show tomorrow. Shear, where can they find you doing your stuff? WildcatAuthority.com. You have a 60% off sale for the rest of the day. Wildcat Scoop Podcast with Shelby and at Jason Shear on Twitter.
and become a PHNX diehard. Like I said, I need people in this Discord chat. Otherwise, it's just going to make me, it's just going to be me looking um, uh, silly, probably sillier than usual. It was the Kia girls that got me. That is a good point. Back the A, boys. Back the A license plate. Oh, I am going to do this, by the way, because it's only 25 bucks. I thought it was like 25 bucks a month. It's only 25 bucks, period. Yeah, no, I, used to, I used to have uh, Go Easy Cats. One. Nobody out there steal my idea. Otherwise, the, you will uh, meet uh, you will meet me in a back alley. All right, for Jason Shear. Yeah, that's not good. I am threatening the people that are listening to the show. Um, Mike will meet you privately in a dark alley, just you and him. Yep, just just us. A lot of alone time. But for Jason Shear, I am Mike Luke. We'll be back with you tomorrow. You have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We're all silly like the mayor. 